since conservative justices took over the Supreme Court majority in 2020, they have, they have displayed an insatiable appetite for upending precedent. Today, three of those six conservative justices, Samuel Alito, Neil Gorsuch, and Clarence Thomas, seemed sympathetic to upending more than 230 years of precedent. The case before them was Moore v. Harper, which hinges on an entirely made-up doctrine, thank you, Chief Justice Rehnquist, called the independent state legislator th legislature theory. The once fringe but now popular theory argues that the federal constitution gives state legislatures total and unchecked authority over federal elections in their state. Former Judge Michael Ludig, the guy who had to tell Mike Pence that he could not steal an election for Trump, is co-counsel to Neil Katyal, who argued against the theory this morning before the Supreme Court. Ludig called this case the most significant case in the history of our nation for American democracy, and here is why. It would, in theory, allow the state legislatures to appoint electoral slates who would vote for uh, a president a presidential candidate who did not win the popular vote in, in the states and transmit those votes to uh, Congress to be counted on, on January 6th in exactly the same way that Donald Trump and his supporters attempted to do in 2020. Despite this warning, Justice Alito, the self-anointed judicial activist for aggrieved conservatives, welcomed the sweeping and expansive view of this made-up theory. There's been a lot of talk about the impact of this decision on democracy. Do you think that it furthers democracy to transfer the political controversy about districting from the legislature to elected Supreme Courts where the candidates are permitted by state law to campaign on the issue of districting? The three justices appointed by Democrats were having none of it. It seems that every answer you give is to get you what you want, but it makes little sense. What I don't understand is how you can cut the state constitution out of the equation when it is giving the state legislature the authority to exercise le legislative power. This is a proposal that gets rid of the normal checks and balances on the way um, big <coughs> governmental decisions are made in this country. And, and you might think that it gets rid of all those checks and balances at exactly the time when they are needed most. Joining me now is Democratic Governor Roy Cooper of North Carolina. Governor Cooper, thank you for being here. Uh, I want to give folks a little, a, little, uh, a little bit of the concept of what you're dealing with in your state, just a little context. Your state of North Carolina is the state that in 2016 passed voting laws that were said by the, the, an appellate court to target African Americans with almost surgical precision. That was your state, where they got rid of college ID, got rid of same-day registration, all sorts of other things to make it harder to vote. They also tried to strip you, uh, because you as a Democrat were elected governor, of your actual powers and to neuter the office of governor simply because it was held by a Democrat. So that's who they are. Are you concerned that the Supreme Court, or how worried are you, that the Supreme Court is oh. about to give that legislature total power over choosing the presidential slates uh, or choosing the electoral slates in 2024. They want to manipulate the voting laws for partisan gain. Uh, this independent legislature theory uses the Donald Trump formula. If you don't like the result, just rip off the piece of the Constitution that you don't like. They engaged in extreme partisan gerrymandering. The state Supreme Court said it was outside the bounds of the state Constitution. This case says we're going to rip off the part of the state constitution that has to do with checks and balances. We alone get to decide the voting laws and rules when it comes to federal elections. No state Supreme Court oversight. No gubernatorial veto. We control it. And you mentioned, Joy, some of the things that they've done in the past to try to manipulate elections. A strict voter ID law that wouldn't even allow you to use a UNC college ID, uh, elimination of same-day voter registration during early voting, cutting the amount of early voting, no provisional ballots for voters who come into the wrong precinct, one thing after the other, uh, drawing judicial, uh, excuse me, electoral districts so that it ended up being 10 to 3 
Republican over Democratic in a fairly even state. And they said that the reason that was the case is because they couldn't find a way to make it 11 to 2. These are the people that you would be giving total control over the voting laws in federal elections. And it essentially would allow state legislatures across the country to rip off their state constitutions when it comes to checks and balances, just eliminating their Supreme Courts, eliminating their governors from the process. And however you want to look at it in, in either lane, uh, it, it's absolutely wrong. And I hope the court does the right thing here. You know, your state is interesting because it, this is a state that Barack Obama, Senator, then Senator Barack Obama, won in 2008 by 14,000 votes, and he barely lost it in 2012 by 90,000 votes. But it's a state that's got a very extremist legislature. It used to have a majority Democratic Supreme Court. Sherry Beasley, who just ran for United States Senator and narrowly lost, she was the Supreme Court Chief Justice. And now it is a 5 2 Republican court. And you have just had a major power outage because apparently someone who was, you know, upset about a drag show, you know, shot up your electric grid. Um, what is the state of ex Republican extremism in North Carolina? And is it because North Carolina is changing and can elect Democrats statewide? Is that what they're afraid of? Well, first, judges shouldn't even have to run in partisan races anyway. And this is one of the things that they changed. They changed the law, making these judicial races partisan again. And they're the ones who have to rule on these voting laws. So that, that puts an, an, an air of uh, favoritism over the whole process. Uh, with the power outage here, we do not know the cause of this yet. We do not know who did it. We do not know the motive. But I do know that there has been a rise in hate speech, in threats, in violence against the LGBTQ community, not only in North Carolina, but across the country. And that's unacceptable in and of itself. We're glad in Moore County that the power is back on now. We've got to be more vigilant about protecting our electric grid across the country. I talked to Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas today about making sure that our uh, these transformers and substations aren't vulnerable to attacks. And we need to harden that yeah. critical infrastructure for sure. It is a sign of change and resistance to change in every way. And North Carolina is one of those states that is teetering on the brink of modernity. Uh, and the election of a Democratic uh, governor yourself uh, is one of the signs of it. North Carolina yeah. Governor Roy Cooper, thank you for your time, sir. Really appreciate you being here.